How's it going people? Welcome back to the channel. Today I am at Chateau Impney, which is a hill climb event. It takes place once a year. It's been taking place since I think 1957, which is pretty sick. And I'm here with my dad who is running, well, running his Renault 5 Maxi Turbo. He's not actually taking part in the hill climb races, but he is driving it as part of a demonstration with Rally 22. So yeah, I'm gonna show you a few of my highlights from the event. I'm just gonna be walking around, looking at all the different cars. I have absolutely no idea how to vlog. I am awful at this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to probably vlog some stuff and I'm probably going to voice over some other stuff that I just don't know how to vlog on the spot because I'm just not good enough at it. But over time, probably I'll get better at vlogging, so it's all good. So yeah, let's go have a look around and uh, without further ado, let's get into the video. see us camped up this is uh, our van and there is easily the most beautiful car that you will see all day look at that absolutely beautiful so yeah i'm going to split this video into a few parts rally paddock classic paddock and supercar paddock and i'll throw a few clips of the cars running up the hill in there as well so the rally paddock was filled with incredible cars provided by members of the rally 22 group including my dad's renault 5 which was sitting pretty alongside this long wheelbase Audi Quattro. The Renault is currently putting out around 280 to 290 brake horsepower, and I feel bad for taking its beauty for granted considering I've been around it my whole life. It does sound good though. <laughs> And the Quattro is just an unreal piece of machinery for it to be sitting next to, in pristine condition as well. A highlight for me was this X-Works WRC Ford Focus driven by Carlos Sainz. Reminds me of the McRae era in these old Focuses and that time he pretty much turned one into a Ford car. This is the rally era that I grew up with, so it's always going to create fond memories. This Lotus Esprit rally car is quite fun in its own right, even if it is ridiculously small. I'm just over 6 foot and even though you can't see my head, you get an idea of how tiny this car is. Not only is it fun sized, the owner likes to have fun with the car too, as he has these racks on the back to put skis on as a throwback to The Spy Who Loved Me, a 1977 James Bond film. Also, this Lancia 037 looked and sounded absolutely insane. You'll hear it in one of the clips in a sec. It also sports the Griffone livery, which you rarely see when compared with the classic martini colours. Apologies for probably completely butchering the word Griffone, but whatever. This 1978 Porsche 911 which competed in multiple dirt rallies driven by rallying legend Bjorn Valdegard is one of my favourites. Even though it wasn't driving as it needed some work, it's super cool to see cars that have been kept almost exactly as they were when they competed. It's like the original dust is still in the car. Speaking of original, you cannot get any more original than this Ford RS200, which is the only example left that has had absolutely no modifications from the factory. It has just 9,000 miles on the clock, and the owner is super protective over the car. It's a look but don't touch kind of situation with this beast, and with good reason. It's absolutely incredible to see, and even if I do wish it was given more of a chance to stretch its legs, I'm so glad it's owned by someone with this level of dedication to keeping the car as original as possible. The same guy also owns this RS1700T, which wasn't running at the event either due to a lack of gearbox, but have a look at how clean that engine bay is. Sounds fresh too. <laughs> Thank you. 
So yeah, the rally paddock was a definite highlight and well worth a look around. The main section of the paddock was filled with some of the most incredible historic race cars you could possibly imagine. I could have named this video some clickbaity title like 7 Bugattis Take Birmingham by Storm and I wouldn't have even been lying, it's just slightly misleading. 100% hands down my favourite car in this area was the 1967 Porsche 911 which also featured at Porsche's 70th anniversary event at Goodwood last weekend. This is a complete treasure of a car with an incredible history. Rallying and Formula 1 legend Quick Vic Elford who signed the dashboard of the car convinced Porsche to consider rallying and after achieving this feat and winning a rally in Sweden he convinced them to go one step further and enter a new form of rallying, Rallycross. He decided the 911 was the perfect car for the job and though it was bashed about in its first outing, it was an instrumental player in gaining TV audiences and spectators to rallycross as a sport for the exciting bumper to bumper racing. Following this, he repurposed the car for the British Saloon Car Championships since the 911 was considered a saloon car back then and he won the championship in it. Ultimately, this car took Quick Vic into the racing spotlight and kickstarted his career into winning both Daytona and the Monte Carlo Rally in 1968 as well as getting into F1 in the same year. There's so much more history to this car. I'd love to tell you, but in the interest of time there's a link down below to a great article on it. Go check it out if you're interested in the car. You can even hear me gushing about the car to the owner in these clips. Sorry, I'm a massive fan. That's right. oh, that's okay. Huge fan. Wow. It's just beautiful. That's incredible. I just love the history behind these cars as well. Like, yeah. <laughs> And you can still see these traces of the shape. And if that wasn't enough, check out this insane Ford GT40. I'm always surprised at how small the car is every time I see one. This one in particular had an interesting history, racing all around the world at famous events like Le Mans, the Nürburgring 24 Hours, Silverstone and others. Such a beautiful car to see and so cool that the owner had all these pictures of the car in its prime as well. This would be a very long video if I went car by car but some more favourites were the Lotus Hill Climb cars, this beautiful Mustang, the multicoloured Mini, these two Jags brought along by Jaguar Land Rover, the E-Type in particular being one of my favourites, and a whole host of other cars displaying incredible feats of motoring history, even if some did corner quite dodgily. <laughs> Anyway, the main paddock area filled with all these insane classics was unreal to see, and some people were bombing it up the hill. As if that wasn't impressive enough, just on from the main paddock area, literally in the fields behind it, there was an eye-watering collection of exotics like this insane Morgan Aero GT alongside a Jaguar Project 7 and a super buff looking DBS. As you got further into the exotics, it got more and more ridiculous and I haven't even reached the best part yet. M4, Vantage, GT3, AMG GTC Edition 50, all these cars welcome you to another field of insane cars filled with McLarens, Astons, Porsches, Ferraris, Lambos, you name it, 
it was here. Check out this absolute beaut, an Aston Martin DB5, one of my favourite cars in existence and something that is basically a life goal to own for so many car guys, myself included. Just imagine waking up in the morning and seeing this in your garage, you would feel like James Bond 24-7. Continuing the Aston trend, a Zagato, an AMR Vantage and all these other incredible Astons were just sitting there looking sublime with the nice McLaren MP412C hiding right behind them. There was also another unreal E-Type Jag, convertible this time and looking just as fresh as the Jaguar Land Rover one, parked next to a 1984 Porsche 911 Carrera Coupe. If you're not asking yourself why you didn't attend this event by now, do you actually like cars? Check out this collection of Ferraris, a race spec 488 in matte black, 550 Maranello alongside a Dino 246 GT. On the other side of the paddock, this beautifully specced 488, another 488 rose through in black, and yet another 488 with old school numbers in what looks like Chicaro Blue, a classic Ferrari colour that I'm pretty sure I've brutalised the name of. And we still haven't reached the most incredible Ferrari at the event yet, but more on that in a moment. Lamborghinis were also out in force. This almost velvety grey SV Roadster with a sick number plate was looking menacing next to the Gallardo, while on the other side of the paddock sat this Huracan, and even better, a Huracan Performante in this deep red with those unbelievably beautiful goldish or bronzish wheels. This person has clearly won. One of my favourites from this area is actually probably quite a strange choice, but beyond all these mad supercars I'm strolling past, there was this beautiful BMW Z4M. I don't know why this car appeals to me so much. Maybe it's how muscly it looks, or maybe it's just the rarity compared with other Z4s. Whatever it is, I'm a fan. And obviously, next to that is the car Ayrton Senna helped to exist, the Honda NSX, in such a bold yellow. Amazing to see. Another cool feature car was this Ciclat, a custom supercar built by one of the people attending the event. You can see the brand logo stitched into the headrest, which is actually the guy's family crest, a pretty cool feature. Apparently the car is appearing in a film in the near future. There weren't any mentions of which film, but a cool fact nonetheless. I would assume maybe Batman or Iron Man or something. And last but certainly not least from this section of the supercar paddock was this unbelievably good looking GT2 RS. Just look at it. Do I even need to say any more? Now I know that whole section of supercars was insane in its own right, but as I walked towards the next area, listen to the nonsense I was chatting. Just want to say for everyone's information, I am about to cream myself. Do you see what I'm walking up on? This is literally 04 JB goals right here. Be prepared. I arrived at this area quite late, so some of the cars weren't there by the time I got there. But that really doesn't matter when you have a Ferrari Enzo and a Bugatti Veyron Supersport parked directly opposite each other. Depending on mileage, that could be anything up to around £5 million for just two vehicles. Really puts my £400 Polo into perspective. I was so engrossed in these cars, I actually did some vlogging. This is literally like my childhood dream car. How can I be standing here next to it? as if it's just like nothing. And how can I be alone in this area? Like, look at this. Like, there is a Bugatti Supersport right here. There is literally a Bugatti Supersport right here. And there is a Ferrari Enzo right here. And there is no one here. <laughs> it's just insane, absolutely insane. Obviously, Ferrari Enzo, I'm sure you know all about the Ferrari Enzo. If you don't, then I don't know why you're watching a car channel because it is probably the car. When I think of cars, I think of the Ferrari Enzo. And I just dream about its brilliance and its beauty and uh, I'm just gonna shut up and just record it and then voice over the rest of this bit because I have no idea what I'm even saying anymore. I'm just literally, this is the first time I've ever seen one in person, which I know sounds ridiculous because I go to so many car shows, etc. but it's unbelievable, just unreal. Okay, shutting up, sorry. So yeah, in case you hadn't already realized, I love the Enzo a little too much. It has a six litre V12 engine which produces 651 brake horsepower and red lines at 8,200 RPM. Only 400 were made, and if I ever manage to own one in my life, I'll be one rich boy considering low mileage examples go for around £3 million. Maybe I'll just get a poster of one instead for now. It's honestly so surprising how large the car is. It's pretty much the same size as an Aventador, but it's taller, and actually weighs around 300 kgs less. It's just incredible. I could go on about the Enzo forever, and I probably would if it wasn't for the fact that there was a Bugatti Veyron Supersport World Record Edition parked directly opposite. There were only 30 Supersports ever made, and only 5 of these were world record editions. This means they had exposed carbon body and orange detailing. Being next to this car made me feel a little bit giddy. The Supersport achieved a world record speed of 267 miles per hour in 2010. The car sold to consumers are limited to 258 miles per hour. As anything over this, the tyres are at risk of disintegrating, and that's not even a joke. It has an 8 litre W16 engine with 4 turbos. Are you actually mad? Who in the world sat at a desk and thought, yeah, let's whack this monster of an engine on some wheels and boom. World record car right there, boys. Because whoever it was, 
I salute them. Again, I could drool over this car for hours, but I do need to finish this video. Thanks to anyone who's still sticking around at this point, you the real MVPs. The rest of the tent was filled with more supercar talent, including this boldly coloured Gallardo, congrats to Libby for winning so well, this incredible 6.3 litre SLS AMG, one of the best Mercs to arrive in this century, which sat alongside a nice Mark 1 Audi TT, congrats again to Alva Chris J on also winning, and to finish it off, this pair of AMR Astons. This blue Vantage was particularly beautiful with all the carbon trimmings you can possibly imagine. I wish I'd been able to hear it actually driving because I bet it sounds insane. So sadly, the racing has been cancelled for the day. It kind of sucks, but what can you do about it? Sadly, I think someone might have died, which is awful. There was a crash up by the uh, chateau up there. So yeah, a bit of a full-on end to this first ever video blog thing, but uh, oh hello. Yeah, so a bit of a uh, bit of a dead end to this um, vlog, I suppose. But <coughs> um, hopefully, my dad can get some footage of himself driving the car tomorrow if he knows to turn the GoPro on. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I definitely enjoyed my day out here. Absolutely unreal, has to be said. Obviously, a shame about that ending, but good other than that. So uh, yeah, what was I gonna? How was I gonna end this vlog? Well, how do I end my normal videos? Oh yeah, thank you very much for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, uh, all that great stuff. Sorry, one way around. Like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell, to keep up to date on videos like this. Uh, and also, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.